So hey, we are in Exodus chapter 30, today verses 11 to 16. The Lord also spoke to Moses saying, when you take a census of the sons of Israel to number them, then each one of them shall give a ransom for himself to the Lord when you number them so that there will be no plague among them when you number them. This is what everyone who is numbered shall give. Half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary, the shekel is 20 jiras, half a shekel as a contribution to the Lord. Everyone who is numbered from 20 years old and over shall give the contribution to the Lord. The rich shall not pay more and the half poor shall not pay less than the half shekel when you give give the contribution to the Lord to make atonement for yourselves. You shall take the atonement money from the sons of Israel and shall give it for the service for, of the tent of meeting that it may be a memorial for the sons of Israel before the Lord to make atonement for yourselves. Okay, so here we have this money. Everybody has to give a shekel, but uh, it's a voluntary contribution, but everybody is supposed to give it. Uh, it seems like it's a little bit conflicted there, doesn't it? Well, serving God is always a voluntary thing, right? I mean, we don't have life in ourselves. We only exist because of the mercies of God. So if I want to live my own way and be a murderer, you know, uh, for eternity, that's not going to happen because God's not going to give me breath to live and be a murderer for eternity. But if I am repentant, I seek him, and I keep growing towards him, and I keep receiving his help, yeah, he's going to transform who I am and what I am because I want to be changed. He wants me to be changed. He has the power to do it. I have been given the will, the free will, to choose him or to choose to resist him. God allows that. And so hopefully I won't choose to resist him, but I'll choose God's ways. So God is a good God, and, and he wants us to want to change, but it's voluntary. It's free will. And so here we have this offering that's given. I have a few notes here that I thought were interesting. In the ancient world, uh, the best that we can tell, there were really only two reasons a census was ever uh, given. Either there was a census usually to prepare for war, like we're just counting up the people, making sure how many soldiers we've got around here, or the other reason a census was given was often because they were going to impose a new tax. So basically, when you heard that, oh no, we're hearing about a new, they want to do a census, that was bad news. That was, generally speaking, bad news, because either it's war or like they're going to raise my taxes. So uh, this is the way it was in the ancient times. So here we have a, a pers an allotment per person. It's kind of like a census, but this is for the upkeep of, upkeep of the temple. So we notice this is a contribution, it's voluntary. And what we really have here is this concept of substituting something else so that you can have your life back. Remember that we've all sinned and gone astray, and so we exist at God's mercy. We receive forgiveness from him, we, we want to be forgiven, and we accept his gift of forgiveness. That's graciously given to us by him, you know? He doesn't owe us to forgive us. It's just some gracious gift that he is giving to us, and we can be very thankful for that gift. So this money that's given is kind of like a visible token of the concept that these people, they're voluntarily giving it. They belong to God, and so they're acknowledging that by returning the shekel, by giving the shekel to God. So this is, uh, we're here, we're on board, we're on the team, make us know your will. And so people would sign up. So of course, this idea of giving a, giving a life and returning a life this takes us back to Jesus and the cross, right? Because Jesus died in our place. His life is a substitution for our life. We have sinned. He didn't sin. He is righteous. We are not righteous. His life then stands in place of our life when we repent and receive God's help and his transformation. Still then we're saved by the righteousness of Jesus, not by our own goodness. Our own goodness that's not the question. There isn't too much of that to go around. There is no limit to the goodness of Jesus. Jesus has shown who he is. So we're saved 100% by the righteousness of Jesus and none by uh, any of our own righteousness that we could say, hey, I, I just did this good thing and, and God didn't help me. I just did it because I'm pretty, I'm pretty good. There isn't anything like that on your record. There just isn't. The only good thing you've ever done is receive impressions from the God of heaven and do good in harmony with those. So our good things, we, we, don't, we can't say we're redeemed on our own basis, that we're our own saviors. Jesus is our savior. The high priest here and this shekel business uh, is, is pointing to that, to that death of Jesus in our place and the fact that his life is substituted for our life. Here it's the shekel substituted for the life. So anyways, there's an interesting symbolism going on here. We'll see you back tomorrow morning for our next look at Exodus chapter 30.